Welcome. So in this part of the lesson, we're going to go through how we can draw circular functions in which we have reflections going on. And we're first going to talk about when we have reflections in the X axis, how do we sketch these? So the first thing you can recognize that a reflection in the X axis is taking place by the fact that you have a negative out the front. That's how you know it's a reflection in the X axis. Now, we're just going to approach these as we normally would. We're going to begin by finding the amplitude. So remember, you just ignore the negative when you're finding the amplitude. It's just going to be the number here, so 3. Then we're going to find the period. The period here is going to be 2 pi over. Now, don't get confused here. If we were to rewrite this, it's just a half x. So that means a half is going to go here, which means the period is going to be 4 pi. All right, so now this is where we need to be careful. We have a reflection going on, so we're not just going to draw a normal sine graph. So let's just remind ourselves about the amplitude. We're going three up, we're going three down. Let's be careful here, and let's remind ourselves of what a positive sine graph looks like. A positive sine graph looks like this. You go up, you go down, you go up again. If we're now reflecting this in the x-axis, so remember, this is my y, this is my x. I'm reflecting in the x-axis. What it's going to end up looking like is this. We're gonna go down, we're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. Let me try that again and see if I can make that a bit nicer. Down, up, like that. That's what it's going to look like. So let's get rid of that one. That is what our graph is going to look like. We know that the period is four pi. So let's put four pi there. You might like to make your x scale as well. So remember, that's when we take this, we divide it by 4, it's going to be pi. So that means this is going to be pi, this is going to be 2 pi, this is going to be 3 pi, this is 4 pi. And just like that, we have sketched it. So hopefully that makes sense. Remember the reflection. Okay, let's now go through what a reflection in the x-axis looks like when we're dealing with cos. All right, so again, this is our y, this is our x. Let's find our amplitude. Our amplitude is going to be 3, so that means we're going 3 up, we're going negative 3 down. The period here is going to be 2 pi on 2, because there's a 2 here. These 2's will cancel, leaving me with pi. Now the domain is 2 pi, so that means I'm going to have 2 cycles going on here. And let's also just find the x scale while we're here, so the x scale is going to be pi over 4. Right, so how are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is let's just remind ourselves what a positive cos graph would look like. A positive cos graph would look like this, but because it's negative, it's reflected in the x-axis, so it's going to look like this. That's what it's going to look like. And that is one period right there, so this is going to be pi. And then remember, we can break this up into four sections, that's why we made our x scale here, which means this right here, and I might do this in a different color just so it's visible to all. This is going to be pi on 4. This would be 2 pi on 4. This is going to be 3 pi on 4. So just like that, we have done that. Uh, now, look here. This is our domain. My domain is to 2 pi. I've only gone to pi, so that means I'm going to have to draw another cycle here. So we go up and down again. So now, this is going to be 2 pi. I've satisfied the domain, and we also need to write in what our other x-intercepts are going to be. So remember, we're just plotting pi on 4 each time. So this is pi on 4, here would be 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, 6 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4, and then 8 pi on 4 is just 2 pi. And just like that, we're done. We have drawn it. Um, normally when we just have bits hanging off here, I like to just put that in. So that's going to be 2 pi negative 3, like that. All right, so hopefully that makes sense on how I did that. So that is reflecting in the x-axis. So hopefully all that is pretty straightforward. Now, let's talk about reflections in the y-axis. This is where things get a little funky, so just hold on. So remember that when we have sine of a negative here, the negative comes out the front and when we have cos of a negative, the negative just goes away. So we're going to be using that fact for when we are drawing these. So as you can see here, reflections in the y-axis occurs when we have a negative here, but then you have to remember these properties right here. So that means when I'm given this, I immediately am going to rewrite it. When I have a negative in here, 
I can take it out the front. And now it's pretty much just like drawing something that's reflected in the x-axis, and that's what this tells me right here. So uh, hence, when reflected in the y-axis, the graph of y equals sine of x transforms onto the graph onto the graph of y equals negative sine of x, and so on there. So that means you just need to remember these properties, and you'll be fine. Then it's just really utilizing what we learnt up here in reflecting in the x-axis. Okay, so let's now draw this out. Let's first find my amplitude. My amplitude is going to be 2. The period here is going to be 2 pi on just 1, so just 2 pi. And then let's find the x scale. The x scale is going to be 2 pi on 4, which is pi on 2. So I'm going 2 up, I'm going negative 2 down, this is my y, this is my x. Now it's a negative sign, it's reflected in the x-axis, so that means it's going to be going down, then up, then down. This is 2 pi here. I have satisfied my domain. I know according to my x scale, this is going to be pi on 2, this is going to be pi, and this is going to be 3 pi on 2. You really just need to make sure you label the x-intercept there, but these are also helpful as well. And then once we've done that, we are done. So hopefully that makes sense. Remember, when you've got a negative here, you bring it out the front. So that's the key here. All right, let's now go through this one here. So as you can see here, we're first going to rewrite it. So this negative inside the brackets next to the x tells me it's a reflection in the y-axis. But let's also remember the property that when we've got cos of a negative angle, that negative just disappears. And that's what we're told up here. Uh, when reflected in the y-axis, the graph of y equals cos of x transforms onto itself. It transforms onto itself. So that means we're just dealing just with that. We can just ignore the negative, which is fantastic for us. So let's now find our amplitude. The amplitude is going to be 4. The period is going to be 2 pi on 4. So what's in front of our x? Which is going to be pi on 2. Let's also find the x scale while we're here. So it's going to be pi on 2. I'm going to divide that by 4, which is the same thing as timesing it by a quarter, which is going to be pi on 8. Then I'm going to say I'm going up 4. I'm going down 4. Now I'm just going to draw a normal cos. And let's just draw it out. Oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty good. That's going to be pi on 2. But remember, I need to satisfy my domain. My domain is still pi, so I'm going to have to draw it again. Another cycle. To here, pi on 2 plus pi on 2 is pi. I've therefore satisfied the domain. We also need to put in our x-intercepts. This is where we're going to be using our x-scale. So this is going to be pi on 8. This will be 2 pi on 8. This will be 3 pi on 8. This will be 4 pi on 8, which is pi on 2, so that checks out. Uh, this will be 5 pi on 8, this will be 6 pi on 8, this will be 7 pi on 8. And then I also like to put in what this is going to be. Can I draw, uh, if I draw, try to draw it again, it's not going to end well for me. I just don't, it's not very straight. So yours should probably be a bit better than this. It should just come up a bit higher. Let's just leave it there. See how it should be in line with that 4. Let's try it again. See, now it's even harder because I now I need to go through the points as well. Right, that's a bit better. Uh, this is going to be pi on 4 there because you got pi, you got 4, that's what it's going to be. I put in my x-intercepts um, and that's it. All right, so that's how you sketch when you're reflecting in the x and you're reflecting in the y. Hopefully all that makes sense and I will see you in the next part. All right, bye-bye.